This is News 3 Now at 10. Thanks for staying with us. Governor Tony Evers has confirmed that there have been two deaths from COVID-19 in Wisconsin. Our Keely Arthur has more on the increasing cases in our state. Keely? Well, the number of confirmed coronavirus cases in Wisconsin now exceeds 160, and Governor Evers is saying tonight two men have died. The first man, a man in his 50s in Fond du Lac County. The second, a man in his 90s from Ozaki County. The governor did not say whether either man had underlying health conditions, how they got the virus, or how long they had been diagnosed diagnosed for. Statewide, the number of positive cases in Wisconsin has jumped more than 40 since last night. That includes an employee at the Boys and Girls Club of Dane County who was last at work on March 11th and at the time was asymptomatic. Nearly 2,200 others have tested negative in Wisconsin with a positive count of 161. Dane County has 27 positive cases, second only to Milwaukee County's 62. Meanwhile, in the eastern part of the state Milwaukee Mayor Tom Barrett announced that he has quarantined himself after coming in contact with someone who tested positive for COVID-19. Charlotte. Thank you, Keely. And new tonight, Rock County is reporting its first positive case of coronavirus. And officials say it is a 57-year-old. Their case shows no sign of community spread. Rock County reporter Adam Duxter spoke with a physician in Janesville today about the difficulties they've had administering tests. Adam. Eric and Charlotte, this first positive test comes after 46 negative tests here in Rock County, but health officials say that doesn't mean there isn't COVID-19 in our county. As Rock County confirms its first case of COVID-19, physicians like Daniel Mitchell are trying to stress the basic reminders. Don't go out in public right now. If you can avoid it, keep your travel essentially to a bare minimum. The test, the first out of 47 administered in Rock County that has come back positive. Mitchell says a lack of available test kits has been a real problem. Right now, with the shortage going on, we're really having to make judicious decisions about who we should be testing and not testing. Meaning if you're not at risk or don't have a pre-existing condition, doctors might tell you you're not getting a test and to go home to self-isolate. Rock County health officials have confirmed the positive test is a 57-year-old who's at home resting. But Mitchell says just because this is the first positive test doesn't mean this is necessarily the only person in the county who has the virus due to the lack of kits. We do need to be thinking about if we are going to have a continued shortage, how we are going to allocate these tests. And we're looking at critically ill numbers as well as we want to make sure our health care workers are maintained because ultimately if this does end up in a community health care crisis situation, we need to make sure that we keep our, our health care workers and that workforce intact. On a conference call with county public health officials earlier tonight, they indicated they don't believe this is going to be the last positive COVID-19 test here in Rock County. They say in the meantime, it's just all about focusing on basics like washing your hands, self-isolation. And again, if you just don't feel good, don't come into work. Adam Duxer, live in Rock County tonight. Adam, thank you. A doctor at the Wapan Correctional Institute has tested positive for COVID-19, the first confirmed case of the virus inside a Wisconsin prison. The worker affected is a doctor who had recently traveled out of the country. 18 inmates were quarantined and 11 prison medical workers were sent home. The maximum security prison in Wapan has more than 1,200 prisoners and is about 40% above capacity. Next is 10. Uh, Wisconsin's National Guard has called on forces to prepare for any requests in regard to the COVID-19 outbreak, approximately 300 troops have now been mobilized to state active duty. Within the last hour, California's governor has issued a statewide order for people to stay home amid the virus outbreak. Meanwhile, there may be new hope in the desperate race to find a treatment for coronavirus. President Trump says he is ordering the FDA to fast track the use of two drugs for sick patients, though the FDA says it could still take months of clinical trials. 
new analysis by the Harvard Global Health Institute shows many cities, including Madison, may run out of hospital beds if COVID-19 infects too many people too quickly. Right now, UW health leaders are making changes, planning for a worst case scenario of a surge of cases, postponing non-urgent procedures to keep those beds open and adding more beds in spaces that might not usually have them. Health officials are talking with government officials about determining places that could potentially be used as overflow hospitals if need be, such as UW-Madison dorm rooms. Cancer patients need to take extra precaution right now simply because they could have weakened immune systems. The UW Carbone Cancer Center is taking extra cautions to protect those patients. That includes limiting the number of visitors a patient has, one for adults, two for children trying to limit the number of pe people in the waiting room. Um, but I think we've been pretty successful doing that using the televisits and the waiting room so far have allowed appropriate social distancing for our patients. Again, doctors are telling cancer patients who are going in for treatment if they are feeling sick to call in. UW System will be offering prorated room and board refunds. UW System President Ray Cross announced that all UW System institutions will refund the prorated charges for housing and dining for the remainder of the spring semester for students who had to leave their universities. That decision is in response to in-face classes being canceled to students because of COVID-19. The reimbursements will exclude the period of the originally scheduled spring break. COVID-19 concerns are requiring the city of Madison to move some of its voting stations on April 7th to help protect vulnerable populations. Madison Mayor Satya Rhodes-Conway says there will be an update on the polling places soon as they are still working to finalize locations. Voters can cast their ballots in the city clerk's office in the city county building or Madison Municipal Building. There is also curbside voting at those locations starting tomorrow. The Northside Planning Council and its partners are working to bring meals to community centers all across Madison. It's to help those experiencing food insecurity because of coronavirus. Keely Arthur has the story. Feed to Go is a free meal program meant to serve those especially impacted by coronavirus related job loss and school closures. It'll be a grab and go. Kids and families will be able to pull up, grab a dinner, go home, heat it up and uh, enjoy dinner at night. Johnson says that while the Madison School District is providing lunch, organizers were concerned about families having access to dinner. So they reached out to Feed Kitchen on the city's north side to prepare and package all the food. This is really a win-win. We get to feed the community, do some really good uh, work for, for folks out, out in the community and keep some of our members working. So it's, it's fantastic. Feed to Go made its first stop at Boys and Girls Club today, where those in need were able to pick up free meals curbside. This was just barely two days after initial planning for the idea, and for organizers, it was important to act very fast. You know, the basic necessities of, of food and those types of things, you can't delay. Keely Arthur reporting Feed to Go will expand the program to include the Kennedy Heights Community Center, the Vera Court Neighborhood Center, and the Boys and Girls Club in Sun Prairie next. They hope to further extend the service to include more locations across Dane County as funding is available. If you're looking to help, in addition to donating funds, Feed to Go is also in need of delivery drivers. A generous local couple is doing something good by donating $50,000 to help Dane County families in need during this pandemic. You know, there are so many people that are in such dire straits right now and I think this is the time when anybody who can could should step up and and help out people who um, you know who are not as fortunate as you are. John and Joe Ellen McKenzie just donated a million dollars for the Sun Prairie Boys and Girls Club that opened in January. This new donation will go to single mothers who were laid off and need assistance with food and rent, gas, food and restaurant gift cards for part-time restaurant workers who lost their jobs, and free healthy lunches for children and seniors on Saturdays for the next month. While many are stocking up on food, those at risk to the coronavirus may not be able to safely shop for groceries right now. And that's why a group of eighth grade girls is helping out by going grocery shopping for those who can't or maybe are a little frightened to do so right now. They buy the groceries on the front end using their money earned from babysitting or dog walking. Then they walk or bike to their clients' homes and exchange food for money. Sometimes a tip is included. We didn't 
didn't really know how big it would get. We yeah. sort of thought it wasn't going to be that big, like it wasn't going to be a big deal. Yeah, just help a few people out, but then it really started to, like, make a difference. Well, really making a difference. The girls are taking precaution for their own health and for the health of others. They wipe down carts and wash their hands before and after each run. The girls will have to pick school back up in April, hopefully, which is now online classes, but they say they will have time still to help out a bit. If you're interested in their help, we'll have their contact information at channel3000.com. Metcalf's Market is announcing some changes for shoppers to help prevent the spread of germs. The shopping center is shutting down self-service areas and are asking shoppers to avoid bringing in their own reusable bags at this time. Metcalf's new hours are 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. with the first hour of the day on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays reserved especially for courtesy hour for people 60 years old and up, plus first responders and healthcare workers. Other grocery stores are changing their hours as well, and we have a list on our website, channel3000.com. US 18 151 eastbound was closed for four and a half hours due to a crash near Blue Mounds. A semi pulling a livestock trailer tipped over this afternoon. The lanes blocked because of the crash. It is unknown if anyone was injured in this crash, including any animals. First day of spring, but we could see a wintry mix tonight. Chief Meteorologist just Gary Canalti with our first warm forecast. Gary? First, we could see some thunderstorms around midnight, and then you're right, we could see a mix or even some light snow by early tomorrow morning. And the reason why is we're kind of right in the middle of a storm system. The next surge of showers moving in from the south and west there are some thunderstorms over Iowa where a tornado watches in effect until 11 p.m. And notice the snow not far to our north and west. Storm Prediction Center still has us under a slight risk of severe thunderstorms, mainly down toward the Illinois state line where temperatures have been a little bit warmer. Although Janesville was at 55 last hour, they've dropped to 45. Notice Kenosha still at 52, whereas the Bear Boudels Airport is down to 37, so about a um, about a 15 degree temperature spread right across our viewing area. And by morning, when the precipitation changes over to snow, there might be a quick inch or two of accumulation before it ends very quickly early tomorrow morning. After that, look for some sunshine to reappear. We'll look for a windy and colder day tomorrow with a high of 37. Later on, I'll take a look at a forecast that includes milder weather as we head into next week. Gary, thank you. And ahead on News for Now in 10, the spring election, just a few weeks away, we'll tell you what's being done to make sure voters are not being influenced by Russian efforts on election day. Stay with us. When we face adversity, we find a way through it. It's about taking care of each other. It's the small parts that make a big difference. At Chevy, we promise to do ours. We're offering Chevy owners complimentary OnStar Crisis Assist services and Wi-Fi data. If you need a new Chevy, interest-free financing for 84 months with deferred payments for 120 days on many of our most popular models. You may even shop online and take delivery at home. It's just our way of doing our part. Start your next project and save big money now at Menards. Save today on batteries from FBP. This lawn and garden battery is only $19.99 after rebate and exchange. And this deep cycle marine battery is $74.99 after rebate and exchange. Complete your projects quick and easy with Wagner's Flexio 3000 sprayer. It has an improved pattern design and spray control that provides better results. Just $99 after rebate. These deals are going on now. During Menards, think spring sale. Save big money at Menards. Ooh, adding beautiful light at your house is easy with Madison Lighting. They follow the trends and bring us the best in new lighting, like oversized lighting that packs a punch with light and art, and modern coastal that sweeps away the clutter and draws on nature to soothe your home time. Tap the expertise at Madison Lighting. It doesn't cost more to visit their showroom on Watts Road, Madison, or shop online 24-7 with free shipping. Madison Lighting. Light changes everything. The new iPhone 11 runs on Straight Talk without a contract and a plan that's up to half the cost of big carriers. With the new ultra-wide camera, your shareable moments are ultra-shareable. Because you're on a network that's more than just big talk. The new iPhone 11. Now get the unlimited plan for just 45 bucks a month on America's best 4G LTE networks. Straight Talk Wireless, everything for less. Slide. 
life. Ford Explorer. Drive it home today with FlexBuy and get zero for 66 month financing plus 3,000 cash back when you finance through Ford Credit. Hi everyone, Hattie's looking ahead to some sunshine, but colder temperatures as we look forward to the weekend. And Josh, you know what they say, the best way to spread some cheer is talking about the holidays for all to hear. And we'll do exactly that. We'll explain starting at 430. For years, social media giants of the U.S. government have known about Russian efforts to influence Americans' choices on Election Day. But so far, very little has been done to stop it. Amy Reid shows us what efforts are in place and what inaction is leaving us exposed to as we get closer to November. So I study um, data-driven, uh, micro-targeted, and uh, digitally mediated political campaigns. By now, you might all recognize and remember UW researcher Youngmi Kim. Four years ago, her research of political ads captured evidence of Russian influence over the election taking place on social media. But the response since she got the word out. So nothing happened. Nothing happened. Efforts on multiple levels have not stopped foreign actors. Kim found out nearly the same thing is happening again this year. Public education and media literacy uh, is very important. Um, however, that alone is not going to solve this problem. So there must be some multi-level uh, solutions. Last May, Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar introduced the Honest Ads Act. This bipartisan measure would have required the same disclosure of who paid for an ad, required on TV political ads, to also be required online. The House Companion Bill has two Wisconsin reps signed on, Sean Duffy, who since resigned, and Mike Gallagher. But neither the Senate nor the House has moved this bill past the committee. Some states, including Vermont, Washington, and Wyoming, have pushed similar legislation forward on their level. But my emails to leaders in the State Senate Committee on Government Operations, Technology, and Consumer Protection to see if they'd pursue something similar in Wisconsin went unanswered. In private industry, some tech companies have tried. Facebook has a digital ad library, and they've implemented new transparency policies. But regulation without infringing on constitutional rights is difficult, and even with controls, it's not not really working. On Twitter, where they've pulled political ads, she said misinformation is still getting out with Russian bots. She hopes her research wasn't for nothing. There's systematic election interference operation, um, and we evidence that, but like, there's nothing we could do. Amy Reed. It is depressing and demoralizing. News 3 Now. There is still time for lawmakers to pass the Honest Ads Act or come up with other regulation. Until then, we want to give you the tools you need to try and fight this on your own. Tune in next week as we look at the psychology of these Russian-placed ads and show you how they use our own biases to promote their agenda. Your first foreign forecast, TV meteorologist Gary Kidal. A few claps of thunder out there. Maybe a couple more coming tonight before we cool down, right? Yeah, we've got another little surge that's moving in, probably right around midnight, especially for areas south of Madison. Let's start out by taking taking a look at high resolution Doppler radar. You can see the next batch of showers coming in pretty rapidly from the southwest out of Iowa into uh, northern Illinois and far southwestern Wisconsin. And we'll widen out the view here and you can see there are some flashes of lightning that are showing up. So again, we'll probably see at least a, a couple of thunderstorms, mainly south of Madison where temperatures are a little bit warmer. To the north and west though, precipitation has changed over to some light snow or a mix of rain and snow. Right now, accumulation should be fairly minor, but they could affect uh, areas north and west of Madison by early tomorrow morning. Severe weather threat is highest down toward the Illinois state line. They act, the highest severe weather threat is back in Iowa, but you can see the computer models showing perhaps an inch, maybe two inches of a quick burst of snow late tonight into early tomorrow morning. It's a, it'll be a race to see how quickly it can change over to snow before the precipitation comes, over, comes to an end. It's possible that there might not be any snow accumulations at all. But three things you do need to know in the forecast. Thunderstorms are going to be likely over the next couple of hours, still around midnight or so, and then that will change to a mix of rain and snow or even some light snow late tonight into early tomorrow morning and then we'll see some sunshine return by tomorrow afternoon but it'll be a windy and colder day with highs in the 30s. You can see this part of the storm, the main part of the storm now lifting northeastward. The rain that we had this morning heading off to the north and east, big contrast in temperatures. Eastern portions of Nebraska had severe weather tonight. The western part had blizzard conditions and so with that temperature contrast zone very close to us right underneath a very strong jet stream, these storms are fast movers so it's possible any thunder 
thunderstorm that makes it into far southern Wisconsin could bring some strong wind gusts, and maybe some brief heavy rain. But notice this warm front draped just to our south, uh, to our north. There's a stationary front that divides the even the colder air uh, to the north that from where we are now. But the winds generally have shifted to the north or northwest across much of southern Wisconsin. The southerly winds are confined to northern Illinois, and that represents a big difference in temperatures. 64 right now in Peru, Illinois, and Moline, Illinois, 42 in Madison, and 38 degrees in La Crosse. So it's not hard to figure out where that front is. But again, you need temperatures really in the mid to upper 50s, low 60s before you really start getting concerned about severe weather, and that will stay to our south. So on future track, one more surge of showers and some thunderstorms, and then a quick change over to some snow on the back end before everything winds down early tomorrow morning. We'll see some sunshine tomorrow afternoon, but notice the brisk northerly winds. That'll keep temperatures in the 30s. Tomorrow night, we'll look for partly cloudy skies, those temperatures dropping probably into the upper teens by early on Saturday morning. Saturday will be partly sunny with high temperatures, most likely in the middle 30s, and then maybe a few more clouds Saturday night, and then Sunday, we'll see some sunshine return. High temperatures, though, back into the lower 40s. Milder weather is on the way for next week, though. In fact, the high temperature trend over the next 10 days calls for above normal temperatures starting on Monday and lasting through most of next week with highs generally in the 50s. So as we check out our forecast for tomorrow, that light rain snow mix or snow just comes to an end early. Then it'll turn windy and colder with some sunshine in the afternoon, high at 37. Again, if we do see some snow, it'll be mainly north and west of Madison with a quick one to two inches very late tonight into early tomorrow morning. It's possible that that might not even occur at all. But after that, look for a chilly weekend. Highs mid 30s Saturday, low 40s on Sunday. And then as we head into next week, those temperatures get back up into the 50s. We'll look for some showers, maybe even a few thunderstorms by about Thursday of next week. But uh, again, the, the cold spells now are fewer and mm -hmm. you know, less, uh, you know, less uh, uh, tough in, in as far as uh, how cold it gets. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're turning the corner into spring. And today's the first day of official oh, spring, astronomical right. spring. That's right. Such a beautiful day too, Gary. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Ahead on Newsry now at 10. Sports may be shut down a bit due to COVID-19, but NFL free agency is heating up. The latest on some of the biggest moves in the NFL. Charlotte will have them next oh, at 10. Oh, yes, I will. News 3 Now First Warn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Dear Road Rivals, charging extra for Apple CarPlay? You're kidding me, right? To get Apple CarPlay in a Honda Accord can cost a lot more. In a Camry, it's standard. Just saying. Camry. Toyota. Let's go places. Here's to the hardest working people in America, the ones who put the do in do-it-yourself. At Blaine's Farm and Fleet, we stand behind you with rugged, great-fitting jeans and pants. Earn $15 in Carhartt bucks for every $75 you spend on Carhartt gear, like Carhartt Rugged Flex Pants, $44.99. These Carhartt boots, $79.99. And ladies' plus-sized workwear and our expanded selection of men's big and tall sizes. The hardest working people in America. Thank you for choosing our home. Here's a list of our favorite spots to help you live like a local. And here is our Spectrum Wi-Fi password and a channel guide to help you settle in. Did you say Spectrum? Experience the fastest starting speeds for the price with Spectrum Internet. At 200 megabits per second, you'll enjoy faster surfing, streaming, and gaming. Switch to Spectrum Internet for $44.99 a month. Call 833-902-4499. Then lose yourself in the best in entertainment with more HD and more free on demand. With thousands of free titles to choose from and the best in live TV, there's always something on. Get Spectrum TV from $44.99 a month. Plus, download the Spectrum TV app for more ways to watch. Call 833-902-4499. It happened again. You guys were supposed to leave yesterday. Is that my robe? Is it? <laughs> Lose yourself in the best internet and TV with Spectrum. Switch now from $44.99 a month each, all with no contracts. Call 833-902-4499. For 90 years, we have been at the center of the communities we serve. We pride ourselves on being helpful and doing whatever it takes for our customers. And while our country is experiencing challenging times, we believe we can get through this together. We are doing everything in our power to get you everything you need. Because of the unprecedented demand, there may be some items in this week's ad that you may not be able to find in our stores. We appreciate your patience and support as we work to get more supply. We also realize that now, more than ever, you need to save money. 
That's why you can count on us to still bring you hot deals and low prices. And you'll find those on hy vs social media pages and hy vdeals.com. And finally, to create a better working and shopping environment, we are shortening our store hours and will be open 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., allowing us time to restock shelves and provide a clean, sanitized store. Our more than 80,000 helpful smiles are here, working tirelessly for you. Dear Road Rivals, charging extra for Apple CarPlay? You're kidding me, right? To get Apple CarPlay in a Honda Accord can cost a lot more. In a Camry, it's standard. Just saying. Camry. Toyota. Let's go places. Even though the future of the NFL season is a bit of a question, big name players are continuing to make a splash in free agency. Today, the LA Rams announced they've released star running back Todd Gurley in his five seasons with the Rams. Second in the NFL in rushing, first in rushing touchdowns, second in the NFL in yards from scrimmage. You ready for this, Frankie? The Rams also <laughs> announced they are letting longtime Green Bay Packer Clay Matthews go. The 33-year-old spent his first 10 seasons in Green Bay before heading to Los Angeles last year. He recorded eight sacks in 13 games for the Rams last year. You could totally do sports. The Denver Broncos <laughs> have informed former Super Bowl MVP Joe Flacco that he's being released with a failed physical designation. Flacco was placed on injured reserve halfway through last season with a herniated disc in his neck. He now now becomes an unrestricted free agent. And we have some sad news for Boston Red Sox fans as pitcher Chris Sale has been ruled out for the remainder of the season as he undergoes Tommy John surgery. Recovery from the surgery usually takes about 12 to 14 months. Sale will be on pace to return early next year. The 30-year-old is entering his first year of a five-year contract with the Red Sox worth $145 million. We'll spend just over a week without sports. You may be wondering what coaches are doing during their off time. Well, Badger head volleyball coach Kelly Sheffield, he has been very, very busy. Kelly's daughters, Lexi and Reagan, decided to glam up dad while they're off from work, off from school. Check it out. He posted this video on Twitter today saying, so. Oh my gosh. This is the sort of thing that happens while practicing social distancing when you have a house full of girls. That's Bravo. a good dad. He's a better dad than he is a volleyball coach. We'll be right back. <laughs> oh. He's a great coach, too. <laughs> on over 400 new Hondas. Lease a new all-wheel drive CRV for only $239. Just $239 at Wild East Town Honda in Madison. It's gotta be wild. You take care now. <laughs> Bye, Jen. <laughs> you did it. You told her that during Steinhoffel's employee family price sale, everyone gets the employee discount. I couldn't do it. Give me one good reason why. Is that me? Steinhoffel's employee family price sale has been extended. This is your last chance to get 40% off on the largest selection of the best brands at the best prices. It's Steinhoffel's employee family price sale. There's always next year. Or never. When their cry is a different kind of cry. When you know they're sick, but are afraid to know how sick they really are. That's when you want answers. When you need answers. Because when it's your child. Your baby. It's different. This is where you'll find doctors unlike any other doctors. Where we treat the untreatable and conquer the seemingly unconquerable. UW Health. Remarkable medicine. Remarkable care. Let's see. Why do professional builders and remodelers choose nuns? Looks to be reason number 245. Wow. Maybe it's that nuns takes care of just about everything. Oof. Yeah, that might not be the case when you shop online. So, why should you choose nuns? Well, isn't it obvious? Nuns. Kitchen, bath, and flooring. Pills. You crush them. Kind of. Kale. You eat it for breakfast. Sometimes. You go far to eliminate stubborn fat, but sometimes life gets in the way. Cool Sculpting takes you further. A non-surgical treatment that targets, freezes, and eliminates treated fat cells. Discuss Cool Sculpting with your doctor. Some common side effects include temporary numbness, discomfort, and swelling. Don't imagine results. See them. Cool Sculpting. Take yourself further. Go to CoolSculpting.com for a chance to win $25,000. While our country is experiencing challenging times, our more than 80,000 helpful smiles are working tirelessly for you. Because of the unprecedented demand, 
There may be some items in this week's ad you may not be able to find in our stores. We appreciate your patience as we work to get more supply. You can still count on hot deals and low prices, and you'll find those on IVDeals.com. And we'll now be open 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., allowing time to restock shelves and provide a clean, sanitized store. Save at Wild East Town Honda on over 400 new Hondas. Lease a new all-wheel drive pilot with leather and sunroof for only $329. Just $329 at Wild East Town Honda in Madison. It's gotta be wild. Get the facts with Reality Check, only on News 3 Now. Gary's back. Final check. What's happening out there? One more surge of showers and thunderstorms coming in from the south and west. Those are going to overspread much of southern Wisconsin uh, within the next couple of hours. And then after that, we could see a quick change over to some light snow. Notice temperatures 40s here, but already in the 30s to our north and west. And by morning, be cold enough for maybe a quick inch or two of snow. But some sunshine returning in the afternoon with highs tomorrow only in the upper 30s. All right, Gary, thank you. Thanks for joining us for News 3 Now at 10. Do something good, be well, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Now, a WISC-TV editorial with editorial director Neil Heinen. Our collective needs are certainly great right now for information, for resources, and for reassurance. And so much is happening so fast, we are all constantly flirting with overload. We don't want to overwhelm you further, but it's hard to keep up, and a lot of the collaborative response we're seeing is positive and is addressing our shared concerns. Examples include community centers arranging meal deliveries and drive-through food pantry service and check-ins with vulnerable families and older adults. Send them a check if you can, please. Businesses continue to step up in so many ways. Wednesday Epic dropped off 10,000 pounds of food at Badger Prairie Food Pantry, and that's just one example. Local governments are also stepping up to support both. Dane County has booked hotel rooms to ensure safe lodging for homeless families. The Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation is targeting grants to small businesses, and the governor has requested small business federal loan assistance. And the city of Madison is partnering with the Chamber of Commerce on ways to support local businesses. It all adds up and it makes a difference.